uh, well, the apostle was writing that to uh, the Galatian church, he said here, those of you that are benefiting from the knowledge, the instruction of the teachers or the preachers, the ministers are giving to you to make your life better and to help you to, to serve God better so that God can bless you, you too have a responsibility to communicate. You know, they give you knowledge. They give you instruction. When you come to counseling advice, your family is falling apart. Your marriage is almost dissolved. Your children are rebelling. Your health is faltering. All hell is breaking loose around you, and you don't know what to do. Who do you do? What do you, you know, who do you call? You call the preacher. Am I right? You contact, or you come for the service. You call them for prayer. You don't know what to do. I mean, there's trouble all around you. You say, I need somebody to advise me here. That preacher who takes the word of God that is well, that mysterious word of God now, the preacher takes the word of God and makes it clear for you to understand to such a point that you make the right decision. You to owe that preacher something from God. Because he gave you knowledge. He gave you wisdom. He advised you on how to do the right thing to get advice. Paul says, those of you who are taught, you communicate. That means what you give back to support those who instruct you, those who guide you, those who lead you. And they stand with you, as I said, especially in the time of trouble. Church people say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give it. But you know what? We're defying the word of God. We're disrespecting the word of God. We're disordering the word of God. And I've seen this over and over. Let's say, as I said, you know, when sometimes you see some parents, they come with their children or grandchildren, they say, my child is very, very disrespectful. Doesn't listen to anybody. Even in school, he doesn't respect the teachers. With the police, he's cussing everybody out. Preacher, would you speak to my child? Am I right? In order to say, preacher, we need your help. And the preacher calls the boy or the girl now. You sit down with them. You talk, you listen, and then prayerfully you bring solution to the child's life and attitude, um, the child's attitude changes. Now the child is not disrespectful anymore. The child is submissive. And you will see that parent take that child and walk out and never even care to say thank you to that preacher. Or even say, I've got to be there to, uh, you help solve my problem, I've got to give to maintain so that you can help me and help more people. That's the wrong way to do it. If you benefit from the ministry of the minister, this is what we have local churches for. You owe them something to them. Just as you come and demand, when you need that, will you pray for me? Would you tell me this? Uh, I had a dream and I can't understand what the dream means. Can you tell me what it really means as a man of God, a woman of God? That means what you want to pick up your brain. You want to pick up from your knowledge that you, you're more mature, you know how to possibly to interpret dreams. And you bring the solution to it now, they get and go their own way, they can't even give back anything. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Yep. You get solution from them. When your back is against the wall, you don't know what to do. Whether you, your family, friends or colleagues, somebody that you love dearly is going to hell. You say, call the preacher. Am I right? And some are possibly now hospitalized and they want a visitation from the preacher. Am I right? And they expect the preacher not to drive his car. Am I right? Does your car use only water? <laughs> or does your car use gas? Yes. 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 What if the vehicle breaks down? He needs mechanic to fix it up. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And he needs insurance. Yes. Where does he get the money for? To, to buy the vehicle, put gas in the vehicle, and then when the car breaks down, he has to get the mechanic. Who pays the mechanic to fix it up? He does. Huh? He does. What about the insurance? Yeah. And then they expect the preacher to go to the hospital. <coughs> and minister and pray for that sick person and still not being willing to give anything to support our local church. That is abuse. 
and God feels it, and God knows how to fight. You say you're stealing, you're using, and abusing the system of God, and you're not doing anything about it. Now, somebody say, yeah, but I give. <laughs> you need to say again when I say that I give compared to what they gain, what they receive out of the services of the men of God. Sincerely speaking, when you see what some Christians are giving, it's very deplorable. It's like a slap on the face of God. They will get tremendous breakthrough. In the time of their trouble, they cry, God help me out. And that minister ministers. If you were to go and see any individual out there, how much money do you pay for it? The lawyers who go to a hospital or what? Tremendous amount of money. But when they give their blessings now, it's time to give to God. They give their crumbs, leftovers. Come, and then that's where, you know, pushing the five, the ten dollars. Twenty dollars, not even to mention hundred dollars. They're looking for where the one dollars are. 